a young American preacher, the owner of a sneaker shop. Reading the Bible six times was the turning point in his life. أن تخرج من ضيق الظلماء إلى النور أن تولد ثانية والماضي مغفور لحظة أن تشعر بالله في قلبك يقذف بهدى هذا ما لا يدركه وصف وشعور يا الله إني ناديتك وسعيت إني استهديتك فهديت بالقرآن أنا أرت طريقي يا الله يا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Yusha Evans. Um, I was born and raised in the United States. Um, I am currently working as I work as a martial arts instructor. Um, I also travel and give lectures, give da'wah, give uh, lectures to Muslims and non-Muslims. Alhamdulillah, married, I have three children. Alhamdulillah, I have two boys and a girl. MashaAllah, ismik ism Nabi. وهذا يدل على أنك أنت نشأت في أسرة مسيحية ملتزمة. هل كانت أسرتك حريصة ومتزمة بتعاليم المسيح وأنت في طفولتك. Yes, I came from a very religious family. My mother named me Joshua. After Joshua in the Bible, after Nabi Yusha, Joshua Yusha, same name. So when I became a Muslim, I didn't have to change my name because I already had a good name. In my early years, in my teenage years, I had an intention and a goal to enroll in missionary work. I never got that far. I accepted Islam at the age of uh, 18, so I never really got far enough to to get involved in it. But I did have an intent to. قبل التصوير أنت قلت لنا. أن قراءتك للإنجيل والإنجيل هو كان سببا في وصولك إلى الإسلام وهذا شيء غريب سبحان الله اشرح لنا كيف Had I never seen the fault of the Bible Had I never put time to study the Bible and see the fault in it I probably would have never left Christianity Never and This is why most Christians won't because they don't read their Bible they don't, they don't know what's in it Because my question was Is God perfect? Every Christian says yes God is perfect so if God is perfect, then if he has a book, his book should be perfect. It should be like this. I studied the Bible from cover to cover. And to this day, I've done it over 15 times. What made me realize that this book was not the book from God and that I needed to look at other books was the very material that was in it. It was replete with contradictions. It was replete with stories that gave abhorrent images of the prophets, such as Noah being an alcoholic, such as David being adulterous, Solomon worshiping idols. All of these things made me realize that this book that I had in my hands was not the book from God. It was a book made by men. So seeing that the Bible wasn't perfect is what made me leave Christianity. When I left Christianity, I was confused. You know, I didn't. I, I wanted to believe in God, I wanted to worship Him, but I didn't know what, what was the right way. So I, I looked at Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Judaism, Wiccan, Bushido, every, everything I could study, because I wanted to know the truth. But I didn't find it. So in that state, I became angry. I, I, I said, God, you, you want to be worshipped, but you, you don't want people to know how. You're not helping. So I became angry and so I decided to make the streets my religion. You know, I became your typical street guy, you know, going to parties and doing what everybody else was doing. So I, I went from being confused to being lost, to being just uh, destroying myself. We used to go to a guy's house that I had known for a couple of years just to get high, smoke weed. That's what I did every day, listen to hip hop. And I, through that, through that ended up meeting a Muslim who wasn't really the best Muslim you might find. He actually sold drugs for a living, <laughs> you know. Um, Muslims do commit sins. And uh, one day he brought up, we were talking about religion. And I said that God has no religion. He just created the world and that's it, he let it go. Um, and he's the one who told me, have I ever heard about Islam? I said, no. And he, you know, I said, yes, but it, I heard these bad things. He said, that's wrong. I said, well then why don't you tell me about Islam? He said, I can't because I'm not a good Muslim. 
قصة إسلام هذا الإنسان عجيبة اللي كان سبب في هدايته كان شخص عادي ما كان داعية إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى وكان يعمل أصلا الكثير من المعاصي لكن كانت نيته أن هذا الشخص يهتدي فهداه الله سبحانه وتعالى والعجيب بعد ما اهتدى يوشع أصبح الكثير من الناس يسلمون على يديه لما أسمع قصته سبحان الله أتذكر قصة الهدهد مع نبي الله سبحانه وتعالى سليمان عليه السلام لما رأى المنكر ورأى الناس يشركون بالله عز وجل أنكر هذا المنكر والله سبحانه وتعالى جازاه أنه خلى الذكرى الهدهد بعد ما دعا إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى وأنكر هذا المنكر أسلم قوم سبأ كلهم وجدتها, وجدتها وقومها يسجدون للشمس من دون الله وزين لهم الشيطان وأعمالهم فصدهم عن السبيل فهم لا يهتدون الشاهد أن احنا لا ندخل على أنفسنا بكلمة ودائما تكون نيتنا الدعوة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ممكن بهذه الكلمة بنية سليمة الناس يخرجون من الظلمات إلى نور الله سبحانه وتعالى He had something inside of him that introduced me to go to the mosque and I ended up going to a Friday khutbah but he was talking about the forgiveness of Allah that Allah's forgiveness was so great that the human being did not even have the capacity to understand it that no matter how much sin you've done no matter how far down the wrong path you've gone no matter how long you've lived in a, a life of disobedience that it only takes for you to turn to Allah ask him to forgive you and you will find him to be the most forgiving that really attracted me because at that point in my life I was living a life of sin and I wanted a way out so I asked him do you have any proof that Islam is the truth because all I knew about that before were that Muslims worship a moon god that lived in a box in the desert in Saudi Arabia so he took me to his office and he gave me a copy of the Quran and said this is God's word so that's how I in the very beginning was introduced to the Quran <laughs> إذا رتلت آيات كريمة سماء بل شفاء بل هداية لماذا أنت لم تدرك نعيمة إني ناديتك وسعيت إني استهديتك فهديت بالقرآن أنا ارتقى شيخ كيف وجدت القرآن في ذلك الوقت؟ You know when when I first had the opportunity to read the Quran, even though I was reading it in the English language, which is not Quran, this is translated meanings. But when you read Quran, you can tell this is not from men. That this is the kalam Allah. This is the speech of the Creator. And and even till this day, that that has that has yet to really sink in for me. Before coming to Islam, there was quite a few parts of the Qur'an that, that, that really struck me, you know, particularly places where it spoke about the Prophets, like in Surah Al-Imran, where you start seeing the story of Jesus in, in a totally different way than I'd, I'd ever seen it before. And you start seeing the stories of the Bible, especially in the first few chapters of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Ma'idah, you see all of these stories. These people were people who not only preached the message, they lived the message. They were the message. They were the embodiment of the message. They were the best of us. And that's what I wanted prophets to be. I felt that these words were coming directly from the creator of all things to me. Felt like a book that was speaking to me. You know, so that was, that was how I decided I want to be a Muslim. You know, because my creator is talking to me now. I need to answer the call. After that, I was hooked on reading the Quran. And I finished it in three days. By Sunday night, I had finished, and I didn't even go to church that Sunday. I didn't even think about it. Even though I was coming back towards God, uh, church wasn't even in my mind. I wanted to know who my creator was. Um, I got down on my hands and knees in my room by myself because a, long, a couple of years ago, I had, when I was confused about religion, I'd gotten down on my hands and knees in that same room. And I said, God, if you exist and you want me to know who you are and you want me to worship you, then you need to help me. You know, I need, I need some help. I need guidance. So I asked for something and then, so I got back down on my hands and knees and I said, you know, here I am a couple years later and I never thought I'd find you here. You know, this is, this is my conversation to my creator. I never in a million years would have thought that I would find you here. At that point in my life, I had almost been killed twice. Once in a car accident, once someone tried to shoot me in the face. Allah has given me another chance. That was, 
the thing that, that, that affected me the most was that I questioned why, why did Allah look at me and give me another chance? Allah. You know, why, why me? What, what did I do to deserve it? I don't know. Wallahi, I don't know. Maybe it's a question I'll have for Allah on the day of Qiyamah. Why me? What did I do? Why, why, why did you look at me and say, I'm going to guide him? I don't know, but that's something that I can, I can never repay Allah for. But I went back to the mosque the next day and I found the Imam. He was at his house behind the mosque. And I knocked on his door and I said, I want to be a Muslim. And he said, why? I said, because your book is what you say it is. He said, okay, you finished already? I said, yeah, I'm finished. He said, okay, in order to be a Muslim, you need to believe two things. He said, number one, you need to believe there's only one God. I said, I always believed that, but Paul had me a bit confused with the Trinity for a while. But I realized on my own that was nonsense. He said, you also need to believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. So come in and let me tell you more about Muhammad, peace be upon him. I told him, I said, I don't need to know anything about Muhammad except answer me one question. He said, what is that? I said, did he give us this book? He said, yes. I said, then if he gave us this book, he is who he says he is. That's all the evidence I need. So I took my shahada with him that day. And then later on, the next Friday, I took my shahada at the masjid in front of other people. أهم لحظة في حياتك هي أكيد لحظة النطق في الشهادة. أريد شعورك شيخ. When I when I said those words, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد محمد رسول الله, and I understood what they meant. I I realized and felt like I went from one world to another world, like the world wasn't the same anymore. Things things that I that I, that I that I felt before I didn't feel now. I'm walking out of one life into another life. It's, it's, it's hard to put that into words. It's hard to express that the me before that doesn't exist anymore. He's gone. He's never existed again. I erased myself in, 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 a, in a sense and became something new. That's something that, that, that is so difficult for the human being to do. I also see myself as a businessman with Allah. You know, that, that I'm doing tijara with Allah. That every day I have an opportunity and a chance to share what I've learned about Islam. You know, the very first day I came to Islam, I told the people at the masjid, why are you guys hiding this beautiful religion? Why are you not out spreading this message? People need to hear this. And so from the very first day of becoming a Muslim, I decided that I would never allow people to struggle for the truth. ما شاء الله تبارك الرحمن الشيخ يوشع نشيط جدا في الدعوة ومركز جدا على الإعلام وساهم في تأسيس العديد من القنوات التلفزيونية في أمريكا لماذا أنت مركز في دعوتك على الإعلام خصوصا؟ You you have to understand how the people behave in these day and age. You have to use the tools that are available to you at the time to share the message. Even the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام understood this. When he used to give his khutbah, leaning on the tree, and the woman complained that we cannot hear you. So can we build you some stairs so that your voice will project to the back so we can hear you? And he, he agreed, and that became part of the sunnah. So even the Prophet understood that there are ways to get the message out more. I know what it feels like to wake up every morning and not know the purpose of my life. I know what it feels like to eat and not know who fed me. I know what it feels like to breathe and not know where the air is coming from. I know what that feels like. So when I see people that are not Muslim, I can put myself in their shoes. I can put myself in their shoes. So that gives me some compassion, some fikrah for them, some concern for them, that I am worried about them. That's what we're here for, to share this beautiful way of life called Islam. So I, I have a gift to repay. I was given a gift, it's my job to share it. سبحان الله كلام أخونا يوشع عن النعمة وذكرى للنعمة واستشعارها سواء لنفسه أو لغيره من المسلمين أو غير المسلمين ذكرني بآية في سورة النحل الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله الله سبحانه وتعالى يبين أن كل النعمة اللي الله سبحانه وتعالى يعطيك إياها هي من الله عز وجل ثم يقول ثم إذا مسكم الضر فإليه تجأرون سبحان الله ما نستشعر نعم الله سبحانه وتعالى علينا إلا إذا فقدناها نفقد نعمة الصحة والعافية ندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى ليل نهار يا رب رجع لنا نعمة الصحة والعافية تفقد الوالدين تدعو الله سبحانه وتعالى تقول يعني ليت كانوا موجودين علشان أنا أبرهم ليش نعمل كل هذا ندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى في كل وقت في السراء وفي الضراء وفي آية عظيمة في سورة يونس تبين كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول 
وإذا مس الإنسان الضر دعانا لجنبه أو قاعدا أو قائما فلما كشفنا عنه ضرة مر كأن لم يدعونا إلى ضر مسه كذلك زين المسرفين ما كانوا يعملون في كتاب الله قلبي صار حي وبحياتي صار لي ظل وفاي ويوم عادت نفسي وروحي ليه عادت ايامي واحلامي الي كل ما اتلوه او جيت اسمعه انسى الامي واحزاني معه من عرفت صارت ايامي هنا نور في الظلمه So the topic of religion came up. Uh, we were at his house. أدعوكم لترشيح أفضل المشاريع الدعوية في خدمة الإسلام من وجهة نظركم سواء كان شخص أو موقع إلكتروني أو كتاب أو مركز دعوي ما هو المشروع الذي تعتقد أنت أنه أفاد الإسلام وأقنع الكثير من غير المسلمين في دخول الإسلام ما هو المشروع الذي أنت ترشحه ليتم تكريمه من قبل موقع نون الإلكتروني أرسل ترشيحك الآن اشترك معنا في هذه القناة بإذن الله راح توصل لك حلقاتنا أول بأول وساهم معنا في نشر هذه القناة